Welcome back, everyone, to Talking It Out with Bachelor Nation. We have a great show for you today. Like always, we have the lovely Serene from Clayton Season here to talk all about her one-on-one -on -one date, and we got to get to know her a little bit, Mike. I want to get to know her. We haven't seen much of her, and I'm trying to get to, you know, just see what she's all about, uh, expound upon her story, and just see what makes, us, what makes her smile. So let's do it. Let's do it. But first, you know how we do, bro. We got to get into our hot takes got to and i'll start it off man i mean obviously there's there's no way we can get around all the drama surrounding shanae and clayton um it's it's gotten ridiculous at this point and yes. i thought of this quote uh by bob marley to tie into this whole situation and it's it actually refers to a man but i'm gonna kind of flip it right now onto shanae a little bit uh, but the quote is, the biggest coward of a man is to awaken the love of a woman without the intention of loving her. Now, it's beautiful. I wouldn't call Shanae so much of a coward, but at this point, man, she is like the master manipulator because in my opinion, like she has Clayton wrapped around her finger. Like all she needed to do was step up and apologize to the women, which she totally faked. Right. She gave the the tears. She put it pretty much put on the performance. Never compare yourself to Meryl Streep. First of all, <laughs> just need to throw facts, that out there. Facts, like facts, facts. You are nowhere near that. But it was it was a good performance. I got to give it to her. But at the end of the day, man, comparing to the quote, she has no intention of loving Clayton. She doesn't whatsoever. And, but first off, first and foremost, Brian, homie, brother, I got to call you out. You was all on Shanae's side during the hot takes last week. What's up? What changed? <laughs> no, listen, I, I give her, I'm giving her credit right now. She's a master manipulator. She probably okay. has taken the title of greatest villain of all time at this point, <laughs> because like, I don't think anybody's done this much to piss off this many people and still be on the show. Like she should have been eliminated probably like one or two episodes. I mean, do you I think agree? she, I think she lost everyone when, she said, "Okay, I can stop now. I can stop faking now." When yeah. she had her little, when she had her ITM, her in the moments. Uh, yeah, interview. the ADHD. I mean, she's had multiple things that you know were were big enough to kick her off. But Why I mean, are we talking about this girl, this girl don't deserve. I mean, it's a total she, she game for her, Mike. It's a it total is. game. But it's she, like, she's winning her game, and it's pissing me off that she's winning at her game. And so, I, I got it. allowing her to play it. Right. I, I mean, only partly. Right. Clayton still doesn't see every single thing. I mean, now we already know what happens because we for whatever reason, the show show the top three women. And so we know that on this two on one, we know who is on that top three and we know who is not on that top three. So we know yeah. what's going to happen on this two on one. So Clayton's finally going to see it. But like he still hasn't seen everything. But I think when all the women told Clayton, that's when he should have known right then. That's there. Like, it, right? Like, like that was the like that's all what the I women was, are telling you, bro. That's what I was screaming last week. It's like, why you couldn't were. they have teamed up like, the, you know, on Katie's season they did with Carl and he, he got the boot. But he got the information from all the women in that group date and he went back to Shanae. She smooth talked him. <laughs> Right, they started making out. I mean, at the end of the Bro, day, I don't even you, think you, it's smooth. I don't even. She, uh, look, he's a tractor door. He is a tractor yeah, door. Thank, like, you, thank you for saying that because I wouldn't have said it as, as eloquent as you. That's what it is. It wasn't her words. It was her looks. And to me, trying Shanae, everything you made the power. baddest on the season. She would say she would, if she was listening. She'd be like Mike made the baddest in Bachelor Nation. We already know that. We know what it is though. When it comes to me, I got my better words. So I just feel like coming at her right now because I'm annoyed that we got to <laughs> talk about her still. Like, it's annoying. Like she didn't smooth talk Clayton. She's she is a she is an attractive woman, and that's what it was. Well, in her words, she's a blonde bombshell, and apparently she for damn straight a blonde bombshell. <laughs> Clayton has, has she not seen Wolf of Wall Street? Self, What's up, girl from Wolf of Wall Street? This is self proclaimed yesterday. What's up, girl from Wolf of Wall Street? That's my that's my blonde bombshell. Okay, yes, I, and I Rachel agree. McAdams. I love Rachel <laughs> McAdams too. But anyway, <laughs> but no, it's like oh god, Clayton Margot Robbie. Lord. There you oh. go, Margot Robbie. That's Clayton the that's the Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh. Clayton is such a good dude, and it's like these two just aren't compatible, right? I mean, I feel like if this was in the real world, she would just play him like she's doing on the season, and and it, it's he needs more of a more of a genuine, you know, good girl. Like that's I feel like that's his lane. You know what I'm saying? Like I just think she would chew him out in the real world, and then what sucks is that. Like, it's like a vicious cycle out there in the world, right? Where it's like, let's say the girl plays the guy, then now all of a sudden the guy gets cold-hearted, and he basically 
doesn't care about the next couple of women he dates when they're actually looking for a good dude, right? Yeah. So he plays them, and then it's like a vicious cycle. It happens to men and women. I don't know. Do you get what I'm trying to say? No, 100% it does happen to men and women both. It's something that, sadly, uh, all genders have to face, and it's it's because of – it starts with situations like this. It's like hurt people hurt people, right? It's like – the, and that's what the, she's doing right now. Exactly. So I'm not saying I'm not saying Sinead hurt. I genuinely think that it's like my the hot take that we talked about last week where we disagree. I don't like her because she's not using this for the right reasons. And I hate to say that cliche term, but it is what it is. Like she's just here to get attention. That's all she's scaring about, and that's exactly what she's doing. That's why it's pissing me off to still be talking about this girl because she's winning in what she desires to win at, and it's it's unfortunately at the demise of my homie Clayton. Now. This is what Shanae is annoying because, you know, there's been this has been going on for some time now where women are, are like and men can do this, too. But this is what I hear from women. They say, I need a guy that can handle me. I feel like that's something that Shanae would say. Right. Give me a guy that can handle me. And if it was me, I'll put it ass in check. I said what I said. Come with me if you want to. Right. So and, do you think that she thinks that Clayton can handle her? No, she does not think that Clayton can handle her. And so therefore, one reason why I think that she doesn't like him. Right. But if you need somebody to, because when I, what I just said, people going to come at me. I have been checked by women. I've been checked by my exes before. So don't get it twisted. It's not no man versus woman thing, right? But when it comes to when people say, I need somebody that can handle me, I hate that term. I hate when people say that because you need to be able to handle your damn self. You're a grown individual. You're an adult. True. Facts. Yeah. And that's what I would tell Shanae. And yeah. I don't like the fact that she is gaslighting. Like, we can't just call a spade a spade she's if that was if the shoe was on the other foot we will be torching this man yeah no and i mean like me being in that position obviously i went through it like i was serious about the process i didn't deal with any or at least i didn't try to involve myself in any drama whenever somebody tried to pull me in i was like absolutely not i'm here for one thing you know what i'm saying whether to see if if rachel Lindsay was the woman hey. of my future right hey. so like i just like the fact that she's basically making a game out of it right like she's collecting she the heads of all the women that she's getting clayton to kick off like that's her that's what gets her <laughs> off in a sense right she's like by you know b-i-t-c-h right she's like yeah. calling out all these women more so than actually trying to advance a relationship of 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 her and clayton so i just think she's making a mockery of it i think her days are numbered but at the same time it's like clayton the women told you about her and you still kept her around yeah homie and that's, you let that, her off that, the hook you let her off the hook homie so it's like at this point it's like that, what are you gonna homie. do what yeah, are you gonna that, do that, when, once the other ladies told clayton clayton that was that was i love you clayton but that was on you that that little last piece that was that was on you i was on your side all the way up until all the ladies came and told you but i'm just not with the the double standards that we have in this world sometimes like i think of to mari and kenny they are a, a very oh, I saw that. Okay. attractive couple. Uh, they are. They are. Kenny might be the only person like robbing you for your abs, the number of abs that y'all have, right? Hey, man. The for, the 40 Club, baby. Hey, <laughs> I'm messing around. Hey, I'm looking good now when I got a shirt <laughs> off, and I'm going to keep looking good for the next few, right? There you go. Uh, but my, my stomach's nowhere near as good as yours and his, though, so I'll, I'll say it for the record. But I, I saw that Mari was, you know, she was hurt because people were saying and commenting, like, you need to act like a lady under her lingerie pick and things of that nature, right? More negative things like that. But under Kenny's, they were like, oh my God, you're so hot. And Mari made a great point, which is like, why can I not feel comfortable and sexy in my skin, but my fiance can? Is it just because he's a dude? Like, Yeah, I mean, if you notice, I mean, I saw that too. I mean, if you notice, it was, I mean, I think she mentioned it in mm -hmm. her tweet or her, you know, when she commented something, back. You know, yeah, you see it, was all, it was all women commenting that, right? Yeah. So basically, maybe the same women that were commenting on the thirst trap of Kenny, like, oh, my God, you look so hot on hers. It was like, OK, this is totally inappropriate. But it's yeah. like they're a couple. If they're both cool with it, like who are who is anybody to judge? You know what I'm saying? Like, let them do we what they want to do. Whatsoever. They both look good. They both look good. I, you know, I know Kenny. If you got it. it, flaunt it. Go for it. Whatever. Who cares? Like, I don't understand why people get so like caught up in like what other people are doing like and some when something like that happens it's like i'm telling you right now brian once the body gets to where i wanted at shit the trapping <laughs> the trapping is starting I'm trapping hard like, all summer long i'm trapping you, you heard it here first ladies all summer long, I'm get trapping. ready 
Get ready. I ain't posted thirst trap in like at least a quarter, right? Mike Four Johnson months, is coming months. for you. I am trapping hard, and I'm still gonna be intelligent. And that's another thing. That's a whole another like topic right there. Why can't an individual be intelligent and sexy, right? It's like if you look at somebody, let's take it's Kenny for example, worlds. right? Take Mari, take Kenny since we're talking about them. Why can't they post a thirst trap and then be intelligent, beautiful human beings, right? Productive members of society. It's like we put people in these boxes, yo, and it's pissing. It's just annoying. Like we put people in boxes based on their title, based on their attractiveness, based on if they're a man or if they're a woman. Like, like Sh- Shanae, um, does she get, is she called gaslighting or is she not because she's a woman? Like, um, wh- why can't a human being just be a human being and we call a spade a spade? I agree. I agree. I mean, can you imagine if, like I said, comparing in my my story, can you imagine a guy doing exactly the same thing as Shanae to the Bachelorette? I no, mean, it just wouldn't happen. It, it genuinely would not happen. First okay, off, he would get if crucified. I was like, for, would, if I was on crazy. that season, I would I would you know how I'd be acting. I would have came stupid at him as an individual. Yeah, and, and just be like, nah, if like Rachel, you got to send this individual home, or <laughs> Hannah, you got to send this individual home, or whatever the case may be, right? So. I just would love a world to where, you know, we're all human beings, right? I'm a I'm a supporter of the LGBTQ plus community, Absolutely. and so therefore I'm a, I'm a supporter of all genders, and so w- along with that goes, I'm gonna treat your ass like you act. <laughs> that's I, that's I, to me. I, I'm totally with you, man. It's that's, but you know, the negativity. Let's get off of that because I try to love and preach that positivity, and I don't really want to talk bad about no one whatsoever, especially because life is so short. But someone that I still, I'm like, I want to know more about. I want to get deeper uh, into who they are. And they also had a one-on-one this past week. And so I would love to talk to Serene and bring her in. How about you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you saw that, you know, Clayton kind of caught on to it a little bit too, that Mm -hmm. she was a little shy, maybe holding things back a little bit. So I'm actually looking forward to peeling back a couple of those layers and finding out a little bit more about her. Uh, Definitely so. Uh, Let's bring her in. Serene. Hi. (laughs) <laughs> What's up, Serene? How are you guys? Good, good. We're, We're so amazing excited we got to have you here, here today. I, I'm excited to be here. Just got done teaching, so crazy day. But ready L- let's just yeah, let's dive into that. Yeah, let's really. dive into that. You're you're a teacher. Like, what grade are you teaching? Like, talk to us about what that. was today's lesson. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I mean, we're learning subtraction and regrouping. I teach second grade. Okay. Second grade. Okay, okay. I have to know, Serene, the biggest thing, math was my favorite subject all throughout life. And the reason I think it was because we had little r- rhymes that would go along and help us remember things. Like dividing fractions, easiest pi, flip the second number and multiply. It just sticks in my head. Did you guys use any of those? You know, I, I taught fifth grade last year and we were using like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, Pim Doss, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yeah. So crazy. <laughs> I'm like, that's I what I learned when house. I was in school. Yes, please excuse my dear answer. That's so cool. I, I, I remember all that. So you're a teacher. You're teaching second grade. I just assume that you have to be extremely patient. I like to I mean, think so. I like to think so. I, I really love kids. And so it's it it comes really naturally to me, teaching. Um. It's not what I went to school for, but I'm super happy with it just because I love being around kids. So what did you go to school for? So my degree is um, professional media, but it's essentially like a journalism degree. Okay, so we'll get back into the teaching in a little bit, but let's get into your one on one last night. We have to. It was a big night for you. Um, What did you feel when you heard your name being called on the day card? So actually, my date was the first one on one that like my name wasn't called on the date card. And that's like not how I found out. I found out because I wasn't on the group date. So gotcha, to okay. be honest, okay. I gotcha. was kind of freaking out because I I have seen the show, but I haven't seen a lot of it. And so I was like, wait, you know, there have been girls in this house that haven't gotten a date recently. Does this mean I'm not getting a date? Just because I always kind of have like that side of like self doubt, like I don't want to be too cocky or too smug. And like whenever um, 
whenever the date card was being read for that group date, there was just a lot of stuff going on. And so I'm like, wait, I'm just like sitting here waiting to hear my name and it wasn't there. And so I was really, really, really pumped, but like just hoping that I actually had a date. <laughs> no, definitely. I get that. So you were like, you didn't want to be too excited for it because it's a possibility that it wouldn't have came true. Yeah, I mean, and there was just, there was a lot going on at the time. Um, so I I just wanted to be like respectful of everybody else. And like, also I wasn't Sweet. positive I was getting a date at the time either, but really hopeful and That's excited. Sweet. Well, talk about that a little bit. You know, there was a lot, like you just said, going on in the house, but when you were certain that you were, mm -hmm. uh, that Clayton and you were going on a date, you know, how was that feeling to get out of the house, get away from the drama and just you and Clayton kicking it at the theme park? You know, I was so, so excited. And I think up until this point, you haven't really seen like a ton of our connection yet. And so I just really wanted to hang out with him. Like I really wanted the time to just really get to know him on a personal level. And um, in the group date setting, we always had like these little moments. We had like great conversations. I was just so ready to actually spend a day with him though. Is there a moment that uh, that comes to mind that y'all had in the past prior to your one-on-one? -on -one? Oh my goodness. I'm trying to know the dirt. Come on now, let us know something. <laughs> I threw the cake at him at the birthday party. So if you see a picture of him with cake on him, it's because, you know, I teamed up with it with a child. So you threw cake on him <laughs> nice. and then he was serving you ice cream at the theme park. What would yeah. you think of his uh, little outf outfit in the apron serving you ice cream? I mean, he, oh, was... he looked so hot, but I was so bashful. I was like, I don't I almost don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Y'all's y'all's date was really sweet. And First off, more power to you for doing that swing. Oh, I was like, yeah, those, those rides were crazy. Hey, yes. I, I've never done that in my life. I'm scared coaster, that. But that swing, I mean, the little straps. Yes. We were over the ocean or the Gulf. We were over the water. And I was like, this is terrifying. <laughs> he was like, Clayton, if we go, I'm going to need you to break the fall. <laughs> Yeah, it, I was, it was a I sacrifice for love. Shit happened, and I, I kind of like laid my head on him because I was like, I cannot believe I'm doing this right now. Wow. <laughs> who was who was more nervous, you or him? For the swing, because I feel like he was. was. You were okay, okay. Yeah. Now what were you gonna say, Brian? Because I feel he was a little nervous, but he was, you know, he was trying to be the man and be all macho. He's like, I got this. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. That's the power of having a beautiful woman next to you that you're trying to get to know. Yeah. I've literally been at the theme park myself. And <laughs> me over here is scared, but I got this beautiful lady. I gotta like gotta try to it suck it up. <laughs> try to suck it up. Uh, try but Serene, <laughs> what'd you say? I didn't hear you. I said gotta try to look a little tough. No, he seemed tried cool. to but, he uh, seemed fine. Like he was not scared of okay. he was like serene or doing the swing. And I was like, mm, yeah. Clay Clayton looked good. Like, he do was it fine. For the memes. Do it for the memories. Do it for the memories. But uh, talking about those memories, I, I think Clayton did a wonderful job when, you know, he was being transparent and honest with you. He wanted to get to get deeper with you, get to know you a bit more. And on y'all's night portion of the day, you guys got to go deeper and have those conversations. Uh you had mentioned dealing with some loss in your family mm -hmm. and how that's been hard for you. And can you elaborate on that if you decide, if you feel comfortable doing it? Yeah. Um, so I hadn't lost anybody until like two and a half years ago, my grandma passed away and it was so unexpected. Um, you know, she never went to the doctor, a small little native American lady like was like, I'm not going to the doctor for anything. And um, we had like a checkup done with her finally, finally got her to the doctor. They were like, oh my goodness, we haven't seen anyone this healthy at this age. And then like six months later, she just started feeling sick and it was like cold like symptoms, you know, kind of something that you're not really looking that much into. And it turned out she had had a heart attack and we didn't know. Oh, wow. um, I guess symptoms what? of heart attacks are different in women. She didn't know she had a heart attack either? There are a lot, there, it's a lot more passive, I guess. Oh, um, wow. You know, so it came out oh, as like yeah, cold like symptoms? Yeah, like I did have this pain like a couple weeks ago that I didn't tell anybody about, but it went away and I've just kind of felt wow. down since then. Um, we had no clue and um, that just like came out of the blue. And 
she had never slowed down, like lots of grandkids and all of that. And so seeing her chase like children around, like young children, um, and then just seeing her like get sick so fast. And even with that, um, I was actually at work when all of this happened and I found out about it and I was just like, oh, I need to go to the hospital. They placed a stint, did like a surgery and they were like, wow, her numbers are incredible. She looks great. She passed away the next day when I was at work. Um, wow. So it was wow. so unexpected, um, you know, finding out that she had had that heart attack. I had like 24 hours and then she was gone. Um, yeah. So that was really Were you able tough. to talk to her at all, like before she passed? Yeah. And it's actually really, it's so special because um, you see me talk about on my date, like my family's not super emotional. Like my parents love me, show their love in different ways, but like we didn't really talk about our feelings very much. Like to the point where like saying I love you can be a little awkward in my family. It's just like, it doesn't just like flow out. And the night that we had found out about all this and she had the surgery like immediately i went to her room and they were like all right visiting hours are closing and um i said good night to her and she just like clutched my hand and looked at me and was like i love you so much Aww. and i was just like oh i love you too i love you too where's this coming from and she's like no i just wanted to tell you i love you so much and that was the last time i talked to her and I mean, that was really tough and it was so unexpected that my mom called me to tell me and I was like thinking of my mom the entire time. So with that, I didn't really get to process it for a long time just because like it was so shocking to everyone. Um, and I was just like so worried about how everyone else was feeling. So it was a really tough year whenever that happened. And did you feel like your grandmother's death did that bring the family together a little bit more after that? It, it definitely did. Um, things like as far as like I still like not being like, super emotional, like as far as like saying yeah. things, I'm like this. I'm the emotional one in my family, um, which is funny because I look like so bored all of the time to a lot of people. But I'm like this crazy emotional person to my family. Mm. And um you know, I think we all kind of took it as you never know, you know, when the last time you're going to see someone is. And so we definitely got a lot closer in that way and just like really cherishing the time and like trying to do things together and plan trips because I missed so much with my family, just like putting myself through college and all of that. And so it just really put things into perspective for me how much how important it is to have that time. Yeah, uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Like how, like, what was it like growing up, um, you know, throughout the years and your younger years through college and whatnot? <clears throat> well, um, my parents are divorced. I have like no memory of them being together, but I have a very active dad in my life. And, but I did grow up with like a single mom, essentially two older brothers. Um, very fun household uh lots of like rough housing and stuff like that but i i used to you know really pride myself on like trying to be tough just because i was like basically a little brother <laughs> See my brother. um yeah but you know both of my parents are just not super emotional people um and neither were their parents it's just like generational in my yeah. family but i've always kind of been this like no but i like want to say how i'm feeling i just haven't always had it like modeled for me and so i think like my siblings and i are a lot more active and like trying to be better at that um but yeah what, are, what would you say serena and i just had to go back right quick ryan and emphasize what you just said we never know yeah when the last time we'll see somebody and right, I, right. And I, I, I'll keep it at that, but I just wanted to, to highlight that and uh, sending our condolences to you and your family. Uh, it's, you know, we see grieving is different for different people at different stages of their life. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, you had mentioned to what you were just saying, you know, being a little brother, basically, in essence, how much older are your older brothers? Um, I have a brother that is three and a half years older than me and a brother that's almost okay. eight years older than me. 
I have okay. lots of younger siblings all of a sudden, but that is all of, like, all of a sudden. <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah. That that's essentially how I grew up was just having my two older brothers. I got what was that like? What was that relationship like growing up? Well, the oldest brother was always super protective over me, and my middle brother, we would just go at it like WWE <laughs> style, like fighting each other oh wow yes. like and i mean not really like hurting each other but i mean it was just i was a little dude like outside playing <laughs> ball with my brother um that was a little dude we we would kind of rough house and then like my older brother would be like hey like stop being so rough with her you know <laughs> sounds like me it sounds like me the older brother syndrome right there <laughs> so i, I kind of want to know about like i'm you know you and your family, you grew up not being the most open about feelings. Uh, your parents separated at a young age. Is that mm -hmm. fair to say? Yeah. Uh, I have, like, no memory of my parents being together. I was two. Mm. You were two? Okay. Wow. Yeah. Makes sense. Got it. Uh, and then you mentioned you put yourself through college. It's You're, like, a very independent woman. Um, so definitely love that. And yes, kudos to you, you know, making it happen. How is it putting yourself through college? Because I had that opportunity. I was like, nope, not going to do it. Oh, it was rough. And there were so many yeah. times that I was just so close to quitting. Um, for the Glad last time I convinced I was doing I was like convinced that I was doing it for my mom. Um, just because I'm I'm a first generation gra graduate of college. And so congratulations. Thank you. Um, where'd you go? Where'd you go to school? I went to the University of Central Oklahoma. It's just like a small D okay. college here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was always instilled in me. Like it was never an option in my mind. My parents were just like, no, you're going to college. And then neither of my brothers went. And I saw, you know, my parents kind of be like, come on, you're going to college. And so I just like <laughs> did it. I, I just did it. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. That's kind of why I'm like all over the place with like my career choice. And then, um, you know, what I actually went to school for. But yeah, I mean, it was tough. Um, I, I don't come from a family that has a lot of money. My parents helped me as they could, but it was my responsibility to take care of myself. And like I was paying rent and, you know, paying for things with my car and like paying for tuition all at the same time. And I, oh. I had a really hard time with it a lot because more power to you. I mean, it was, it was tough. You made it. Uh, yeah. Worked a lot of random jobs to do that for myself, but that's that's like something I'm really proud of. Oh, definitely, yeah, absolutely, so I'm, as you should I'm, be. I'm proud for you because <laughs> yeah. could could not be me. Uh, back to your your day with Clayton, right? You, you know, y'all have this deep conversation. Now, I appreciate you, you know, opening up a little bit with us here on, on talking out. You get the one on one. Uh, you know, you get the rose at the end of it. How did it feel when you got that rose from Clayton after having that deep conversation and earlier, you know, having it? You know, a wonderful fun embrace with them. I mean, it felt like a really like well-rounded day, and um, it it felt like we had progressed so much by the end of it. Just because you know, I had that one-on-one, -on -one and we had been there and been on dates already, and so I felt like you know I had already kind of established this like really fun relationship with him. I just wanted to see, okay, like you know, can we have like a deeper connection? You know, can we connect on more than just like being goofy with each other and like yeah. chasing each other with cake, you know? Um, <laughs> and those those conversations started to progress and that's why I was so excited. But we all know time is so limited and there were yeah. so many people. Um, and so at the end of that night, I felt really good about where we were at. and. Um, just truly really excited and I was really thankful that he listened to me the way that he did. He's a really active listener. Um, yes, you, know, you don't see like the whole conversation, um, but he was really great. And I'm not sure how I would respond if someone had said that to me either. So, Yeah, you mentioned that, you know, there was like more to more to you. You were a little bit mysterious and he wanted to know more about you. Like how how easy did he make that? you know, transition for you to be able to open up to him? Um, you know, looking back, I thought I was being so open at the time, like before, you know, seeing this. And 
I can kind of see it now where he's like, oh, she's definitely like holding back a little bit. And I was like, what? Mm. We had so much fun together. I just want to have like a deeper conversation. But um, I, I think he could kind of sense that. And um, some of that, you know, came from traveling, which was like thinking about like losing my cousin and things like that. Mm. I'm having like these crazy life experiences that like she'll never get to have. And so we'd be like having all this fun. And I just kind of like have this wall up a little bit sometimes because my wheels were always like turning with like other things um, that I couldn't really like always push to the side. Um, But he made it so easy. It was never like with him a question of can I open up to him? He made it so easy. It was just like, oh, this is kind of like deep stuff. Um, This is kind of like deep, dark stuff. Like when is the right time for this? Um, But, you know, he asked me about it and I trusted him and so it just it felt really good for it to be so well received because it was a lot it was a lot serene so much was said right there thank you um you 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 say that you know you and your family don't open up or talk about these emotional things but uh and sending condolences to your cousin as well and your grandmother yes i i literally feel through the screen that you are an empath. You do, you can feel, you know, you do feel for your people. You do have lots of love to give. Uh, for the people listening, what would you tell them are some ways that they can like open up a bit? Cause you, we've seen both sides of you. We've seen you starting to open up. We see it here right now. I think for me, um, just like having, having a good support in people around me, not always feeling like they knew what I needed from them. And so for me, it's been about like learning to be able to say like what I need from people or um, letting people know how I'm feeling because growing up in a house with like so many kids, I was so observant of like everything else going on um, that I think the most helpful thing for me has been to like really slow down and remember to tell people how I'm feeling. which is, it sounds like such a small thing, but you can't expect people to understand what you're going through or, you know, relate or just know where they're at with you if you don't tell them, you know, you don't tell them how you're feeling. And that was another thing I didn't want, like literally my mind was blown. He was like, I, I was wondering if you were like less interested in me than you were. He said something along those lines and I was like, what? I would never That's want. Right. I would never want you to think that. Um, what? <laughs> what is it not obvious? <laughs> I guess it was um, not obvious, but. No, that's so real, right there. That's uh, that's paramount, Serene. That's everything. Like you just said, it may seem so small, but it's such a huge thing. Um, but a small thing that we could do, but the outcome is absolutely pivotal. Of just, hey, how you doing? To all the people in our peer groups, how you feeling? And for you to be able to do your part and reciprocate and just be honest about how you feel. So uh, thank you for sharing that. I'm pretty sure you're definitely going to help somebody out there to include Brian and myself. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Thank you. And do you feel like the show, I mean, obviously going through this experience and, you know, being on national television, talking about, you know, things that are so personal, like how do you feel like that's helped you moving forward now that you're out out in the real world? I mean, honestly, just seeing a lot of how I communicate and, I can kind of see my own wheels turning and like I remember what I was thinking at the time and I think seeing myself and seeing myself express these things has definitely helped a lot because I I mean it might not have seemed like the craziest thing to a lot of people but I really had to push myself to um, feel comfortable doing that Um, not that like I was uncomfortable with Clayton at all it was more of like, is it normal to, you know, he's asking, like, should I tell him? Is it the right time? Like, I just think about things so much that it can kind of become like just a whole nother thing. And so it definitely has helped me just to see um, how I communicate. And because I'm so observant of other people, but I'm never paying attention yeah. to myself, you know, I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I once heard something from one of my homegirls. She said, uh, this is crazy, and I want to get back to you. She, you just made me think of it. She said, she calls me Mikey. She's like, Mikey, um, 
I was asking her how her son was. This was like five, six years ago. She was like, I feel bad for saying this, but no one ever asked, because she had just had a, a newborn. She was like, no one ever asked how I'm doing, right? She's like focusing all her time, energy, effort onto her child, which is like what a parent should do. But at the same time, she just felt like she was almost isolated. And like listening to you, having all these siblings, you know, being a teacher, being in this house full of all these crazy women, you know, you're trying to like look out for everybody else, make sure everybody else is okay. But you know, Serene, we love you too. Yeah. Thank you. We try, we try and hear what you got to say as well. Uh, <laughs> but like on to some, to, some, to some fun stuff, right? Were you at all nervous, you know, getting on that stage and basically roasting Clayton? <laughs> Yes, I was so nervous and oh man, like stage fright. Yes, but at the same time, like something we kind of would talk about and bond over is that like we both have brothers. And I was like, I don't I don't know if I want to roast you. Like I grew up with I grew up with brothers, like it's either gonna be well, really we, bad because I think I'm funny and I'm not, or it's yeah. or it's gonna be like rough. Like so I, I was really nervous for that just because I was like, me and my brother go at it like unfiltered. He's like, no, like bring it, Serene. Like I Come need you to bring it. From your perspective, because you were there, right? People that we could have a million guests on and they would they could always say, Mike, you weren't there. You know, Brian, you weren't there. Right. So Serene, let's talk about the roast of Shanae because that was like straight fire. Was it deservingly so? Was it what? Was it? Did she deserve it? Did she deserve to get roasted the way she did? I no lies were told. <laughs> right, fair, I'll just say enough. that no lies, no lies hey, were told. Fair, I mean, was it thing? Probably not. But everyone yeah, got roasted. Gracious. Like there, there are yeah. things that you know people don't really see, and we all roasted everyone. Like yeah, it was pretty interesting. Went, like all of us went for it with everyone. So. It wasn't, I know that it could definitely look like hard, Yeah, it was. but it was just people going off of their experiences and we we're all like, okay, we can finally like just relax and, and like have fun. This is a super fun day. And so I think people were just excited to do that. Yeah. I thought it was an interesting dynamic that it's like, okay, you guys kind of laid off uh, Shanae a little bit and you guys went out at each other. I was like, okay, there's maybe a little other drama starting between the other women now. Like it's not all Shanae. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Hey, let, them, let, them, let them talk shit about each other. You know? <laughs> I've never hurt anybody, right? Yeah. I, I'm, 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 I had no clue that the roast was going to be as crazy as it was. So wait, what was the biggest roast about you? Like what was the... Good question. Oh, that I have a big forehead. <laughs> that's not a roast. Oh, that's it. That's, that's, that's not as good as it can do. Yeah, like I have a big forehead. Um, Teddy and I are kind of like we treat each other like sisters. And so she had said something along the lines of like, I talk so much. I'm so long winded that I start to lose people. And I was like, <laughs> you know? Okay. <laughs> that, that's that's a good one. That's it was good funny. One right it was funny. It was all in good fun. Like we were all cracking up. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, some of it hurt. It, it's a roast, but that's what's so great about it. Like we exactly. got, we got just gotta brush it off the shoulders. Some that's of it. Us got close. Exactly. After. Hey, the the most famous big head in the game right now is glowing. She's doing beautiful Rihanna. So we love girls with big foreheads. You know. <laughs> Do you do okay. that? If having a Rihanna. forehead means anything, like it's just more for us to kiss on. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I'll, I'll kiss take on. it. I'll take a big forehead <laughs> if it has anything to do with her. <laughs> there we go. All right, so Serene, we want to you know dive into you a bit more. And you're from you're from OKC, right? Yes. I'm correct. All right. So, what in the world is it like growing up in OKC? Tell me about that. Uh, there's. I mean, there's. It's a growing city. Um, yes. There are things popping up all over the place. And I've lived here my entire life. So it's kind of like driving down the street or hearing about something. There's a new business all the time. Like things are just starting to pop up. But when I was a kid, there wasn't really a lot. Um, I, you know, I went to school in the inner city. And so it was relatively diverse for what people would picture. I think with right. Oklahoma, um, lots of different races, but 
Yeah, I mean, there's there wasn't a whole ton growing up. <laughs> Who was Serene in high school? I was all over the place. I mean, just dipping my toes in anything. Just I like ran track, not like Marlena though. Uh, no, said, not like Marlena. <laughs> Put it up there. Not like Marlena. Not like that. What was your What was your event? Um, I ran mid distance, so I'm not super fast. <laughs> Not super fast, but I had like the stamina to keep going. Like I could like sneak up on people at the end of the race. Gotcha. That there last little go. leg. Yeah, like and what was sixteen hundred? Uh, okay, so like in high school and college, like what was dating like <laughs> in Oklahoma City? I mean, I had <laughs> I had like a couple of high school boyfriends and um, in college, just dating around, but like nobody's serious about anything. And so I think for me, just like wanting to have a family, I'm kind of like, I'm not going to like waste my time on this. I'm very much, I can see what you're doing right now. I, I can see what you want and I'm not going to be bothered with it if like our values don't align. So I haven't really I dated it. a ton, um, you know, but I've dated a little bit. So did like it. any of those experiences help you going on to The Bachelor and, and meeting Clayton? And did you know more or less going in what you were looking for when it came to a significant other? Um, I I would say definitely, but Clayton is just like the sweetest unicorn. So it really is <laughs> really easy to just like it's it wasn't really comparable to anything I had experienced before as far as like mm -hmm. relationships go. Um, so I don't know. It's kind of tough. Like every guy I've dated has been a little bit different, but like Every, everything has its own lesson, you know? Definitely so. Absolutely. I I love the way you said it about the, the people that you dated. You were so sweet when you just described it. We know what it was. <laughs> they ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't shit. I, I learned my lesson. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you said it so lesson. sweet, though. I'm like, Yo, everyone Brian, I've, a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I've never asked this question before, but Serene, if someone that you had talked to and or dated prior to going on The Bachelor hit you up, how would you come at them? No. And did they hit you up? Like, wait, that's Serene? Did people talk to you? Like, or people She's giving us a look you? right now, bro. I'm trying to read the look. What's it, what we um, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, no one's really irredeemable unless, you know, something really bad happens, but kind of like i don't know i feel like once i date someone and something happens i'm not really trying to spin the block again um mm. you know we we have right. i feel like most of us have had that like longer relationship where things kind of happen you learn a lot of lessons and you just kind of realize like when to step away from people and um i i feel like now i'm just like why do you want to talk to me now hey like, what, you want to talk to me now? what are your intentions here? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, nah, Brian, any intentions like, with the shit back then? I have no clue what's going on in my life right now. Like, you don't even know me anymore. Like, true. I'm a whole. Wait, whole Serene, when you say right that, you got to flip the hair. Talked, and like, uh, you know, so. I feel like Brian, somebody sure. definitely, at least one person, she has at least one zombie and try to come back into it. A zombie. Oh. That's what you call it. That's what you call them. You call them zombies. Wait, what you call them? We call those hauntings. Like, hauntings. like sometimes you get right. ghosted and sometimes you get haunted. Like they just like keep coming. I never heard yeah. the haunting. Serene, Serene like seems no nonsense. Like once she cuts you off, you're done. You're done. Hey. There's no, there's no coming back. There are X for a reason, Brian. There's an X right. for a reason. Yes, gotta, exactly. Got to leave it in the past. Leave it in the past. So you know, going back to the fact that you're a teacher, you teach in second grade now, um, and you were a fifth grade teacher. You know, you were saying that you didn't know exactly what you wanted to do. I still am in a limbo and I'm old. I got gray hairs now. I still don't know. But being has being a teacher and dealing with children, did I did you ever think that I would give you an advantage of going on the bachelorette or going on the bachelor, dealing with other grown adult children? Uh, it's interesting because if anything, teaching has just taught me that everyone is so different. And you never truly really know what's going on with someone like, but I think the differences with kids, they're a little more transparent. And so you're able to like kind of sense things and feel things out. But I think 
that's just, it's really affected me in my just adult life, everyday life. Um, because I kind of look at people and I'm like, okay, there's always something more to this story with everyone. Like the, the way that people are, you know, how they communicate, how they were conditioned as a child. I really think about those things when I come into contact with people, but um, I would for sure say that helped me understand, I think a lot more of where people were coming from living with so many people at once. I like that, it's great. Giving me like a lot of insights, something to think about for sure. And what's just a random question? What's like your discipline style like? Like if the kids act up in school, like what are you? You put them in timeout. Like what's your what's your methodology there? You know, I try to be cool. Um, I nobody likes okay, the cool mean teacher. teacher. You know, <laughs> um, but I I pride myself on building like a relationship first. So there's like a level of respect and it's kind of like hey, trust you yeah. know you're not supposed to be doing that right now it's kind of like it gives you see that you see the voice back. switch up a yeah, little bit know, there I saw, mike i saw the voice switch i saw <laughs> the you know the face the facial reactions and everything I like, went down a little bit. i can't imagine a second grader what he would do or she would do <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs> yeah there it's nothing sure. nothing too crazy it's just like are we making smart choices right now and they're normally like <laughs> I could be doing this like here. you make them Your self reflections reflect. are hilarious. <laughs> that's that's how you learn though like if you just yeah. hammer things like do people really listen to you yeah, I think it's really right. important to think about your audience like whoever that person is and how how are they going to receive this message the best like what's the best way for me to communicate this to them for them to receive it how I want them to love that love I know I'm like I'm over here listening to a brand like damn <laughs> I, 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 guess, I guess my communication she, period did help me a little bit. She's like, molding these yes. kids and making know. them better yes. people. That's it amazing. <laughs> Wait, Serena, I have to ask, where's Leo DiCaprio? DiCaprio? <laughs> did, did I pronounce his name correct? It, you did. You did. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he's right here. He's sleeping. He's having a cat oh. nap. But Oh, he can't make a, an appearance on TIO? I could grab him. I could. We don't want, you? We, you know, cats be getting mad sometimes. I had a cat. Yeah, don't, don't let them claw you in the face there. <laughs> we ain't trying to have no domestic violence here on the show. <laughs> well, Leo DiCaprio, uh, how long have y'all been in each other's lives? <laughs> For those that don't know. So people, it's really funny because people are like, oh my gosh, crazy cat lady. And I'm just like, I just like animals. And I got him my first year in college and I was just like, what's an easy animal? cats take care of themselves I got a cat so they definitely he, are easier he, yeah. he, that's right my that's dog, <laughs> you know he's my dog um but he's I mean he's pretty chill it's been a while I mean I, he's almost eight years old so he's kind of like a grumpy old man now talking about animals and you being on The Bachelor <laughs> what has been your longest previous relationship prior to going on The Bachelor? That is not where I thought that was gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> that I was a seamless segue, okay? You know, snake. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> my longest uh, previous relationship. <laughs> Gotta keep you on your toes. Was like my high school boyfriend, and we kind of dated like on and off in college. Um, but it was, I mean, it was pretty long, but it's, it's, it was like spaced out, like two years here, two years here. Do you feel that you got to ask Clayton anything that was like on pressing on your mind? Did you feel like you held back at any point in time thus far? Did I get to ask him anything pressing? That you was that you really truly wanted to ask, or felt that you should ask anybody that you're considering to be a partner in your life? Honestly, I feel like our conversations would flow so easily that it wasn't really like okay, ask a question or. I really, yeah, it's like, it's I would think, because because you really do value the time and as much as you want it to be a supernatural conversation, you do have to think about things you want to know about this person at the end of the day, if you feel like it could be something real. And so, of course, you go into it thinking, you know, I do need to find this out at some point, but our conversations flow so easily that it, like most of it would just come natural, you know? I, I feel right. like we would find ourselves like running out of time just because there were so many people, you know. And just to finish off, uh, Serene, what, you know, what else would you like the viewers to know about you that maybe they couldn't see on on TV? 
Ooh. That's a hard Stumped one. her with this one. <laughs> That's a hard one. I don't know. I feel I feel like I I want people to know that I kind of have like this goofy side. Like I feel like so far what I've seen of myself, I look so serious. I look we so kind of got serious. caught that goofy side at How about the sale? at the, the uh, amusement park. No. Yeah, no. I I, yeah. I think that started to come out and um Clayton made it really easy. Like we were just like big kids together, um especially on that date and on like the birthday party date. And so it was really easy to like have that brought out, especially in like a foreign environment, you know. It's everything is just so strange and like moving so quickly. It was really nice to just kind of be I don't know. I keep saying like be a big kid like but that's really what it was. It was just like getting to relax and like have fun. That's and real. So you have a fun, goofy, and that's kid really like side to you. Yeah. That's really who I am. Um, I like to crack jokes a lot. Am I that funny? Probably not. <laughs> if you feel as you are, that's what it matters. That's all about <laughs> the that confidence. Person, like at the road, like <laughs> ask anyone. I could not get through my jokes because I thought they were so funny. And <laughs> you just start laughing. So embarrassing. And it was embarrassing me while it was happening. But I'm one of those people that like, once I start laughing, I can't stop. One of those people, like I laugh at the most inappropriate times. Like everybody's so serious. And I'm like, I feel like you, that person that would like, I would love you, but it would get annoyed because like, when you start laughing, I'm just going to have to start laughing with you. Oh, and I'm going to be like, I'm like, Mike, why are you laughing? Like, it's, it's like, just like an inappropriate laugh. moment. To be yeah, I'm just going to laugh. Never ending, like never ending. <laughs> the, I don't know. Just thinking about, you know, staying up super late sometimes and you have to go to bed. I was definitely the person like laughing in the rooms at the mansion, like in the Keep laughing. Night for no reason. I don't know if it was like just being like super sleepy from being on dates really late or I don't know what it was, but yeah, I just I and who, love to laugh. But those are the kind of people I need in my life. So who were you laughing with the most? Like, who were your best friends in the house? Oh, my gosh. Susie is so funny. Okay. Susie is okay. so funny. Like, everybody knows Gabby's really funny, too. But I yeah. feel like Susie is, like, one of the funniest people I know. And it's so um, understated. She's just, like, a goofball. Um, she was my roommate a lot. And so we would just crack up laughing. Hunter is really funny. Teddy is funny, but it's like a dry sense of humor. Like, where you're like, are you being mean to me right now? But I like, I think it's funny. Like, <laughs> that was so, kind of hilarious, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right, Serene. Go ahead, Mike. Now, I was just going to say, Serene, I don't know if you do or don't know, but here on Talking Out, we ask all of our guests for a beautiful gem. So we want to hear what you got for today's episode. Okay. Um, there's this quote that has kind of stuck with me just my whole life. And I feel like it kind of applies to like er every area of your life is especially in my life. I found that it applies. Um, and I kind of carry it through all my different phases and like growing and changing. It's plant your own garden and decorate your own soul instead of waiting for someone to bring you flowers. So like not like being yeah. like hyper independent mm. or anything, but really just Love like that. nourish yourself. Um, you know, make sure you're getting what you need and kind of that's -love. like the basis for being able to give love to other people, whether it's like friends, family, relationships. But I, I just feel like that's really important to take that time um, to make sure you're good. I'm I'm a person that struggles with that a lot, and so that's something I like to remember. I love that. It's like if you're not good, it's gonna be tough for you to be good for other people, right? It's like you right. gotta be good first. Like Take I care can't pour from an empty cup, and sometimes exactly. we like let it go a little too far. You know, you have Perhaps to like, always bring where you water it most. Right. I love that. I I cannot go after that, Jim. So Brian, uh, I will leave it to you, sir. That was a great one. Thank you, Serene. Thank you. <laughs> My gem, uh, just a couple things to remember out there, everybody who's listening, a couple things. Tomorrow is a new day. Making mistakes are a part of life. Saying no is okay. Not everyone has to like you. And beauty and strength come from within. A so couple, couple nuggets there for everybody. I think that every single individual, whether you like them or not, that has come through this show or any other position that or thing that we've done, 
knows that not everyone will like you. Mm. <laughs> and it's something that we get all especially learned. if you're on the show. <laughs> that's 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 a yes. fact. <laughs> like not everyone will like you. If you expect that, you you're you're in trouble. I know. You're in the wrong yeah. business. Like should not have done it whatsoever. Uh no, I love that as well, Brian. So if we're keeping on with this theme, which I absolutely love, uh, my gem of the day would be to hug that person a second longer. Just give them an extra second. Give them an extra two seconds. Uh, hug, as we all know, hugging genuinely releases serotonin and it alleviates sadness and it creates even more happiness within us all. So, uh, Brian, when I see you next, I'm gonna give you a long extended hug. Uh, Serene, if you're comfortable, I'll give you a hug as well. I'm a hug yeah. <laughs> we'll have a group hug. Not, we'll all, have a group not hug. only did you get sentimental, but you came with the facts too. That was that was scientific. I had to. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Well, Serene, thank you so much for being on today's episode. Cannot wait to continue to watch your love unfold with Clayton. Yes, thank, thank you, you so for much having for being me. Here. Brian, I felt that Serene was a grown woman. I know I said it to her face. I'm gonna say it again. She just she grown. She knows she know exactly what she wants. She knows what she's looking for. Uh, I feel that like a grown individual, we don't all have it figured out. And I think that it's beautiful that uh, she gives herself grace. And I just truly can't uh, wait to watch her season and continue to unfold with Clayton. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously we didn't get enough of her in the latest episode, but I felt yeah. like we were able to get peel back the layers a little bit and get to know her a little bit better. And she just has a, you know, such a great story with everything she had gone through in the past couple of year, couple of years with, you know, losing family members and whatnot. And I mean, I thought that was, you know, a, a great lesson that she taught us, you know, with when she went into her grandma's bed and like, she was able to say, I love you, you know, in her final hours. And I think that's priceless at the end of the day, because sometimes, you know, we don't, we don't get that chance. You know what I'm saying? So, I thought that was beautiful and you know just the fact that she's molding the youth of of, of, of our country of okc and uh you know it seems like she's molding them into you know a good good people and good individuals growing moving forward so i, lo I love everything about her story uh, i do as well and i she she got a little she do got a little mysteriousness to her yeah she oh, definitely yeah. definitely got some mysteriousness to her for sure for certain uh, but I, I'm just happy Serene came on and, uh, you know, got to chop it up with his hell talking it out. Absolutely. And of course, to all of our listeners out there, we hope you enjoyed the episode and we just thank you guys for tuning into the episode. We love y'all. And of course, don't forget, I say this every week, we're casting for The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. So make sure to head to bachelornation.com forward slash apply. Again, bachelornation.com forward slash apply. You never know. You could meet the love of your life, or end up I mean, on you paradise. Did. I don't know. One of the one of the two, maybe. You definitely did. Brian. I did. So, yeah. So right now it's fifty fifty. So make sure that you guys apply. And as always, I may not, but Brian does. He wants to hear every single opinion story. No, we both do. All of them. All uh, of them. And insight. So please don't forget to like, comment, follow. Message us on social at Talking Out BN. That's Talking Out B as in Bachelor in His Nation on IG. And as always. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and listen to us on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. And baby, I ain't got to tell you no more. Don't DM me until you hit that subscribe. We love y'all.